Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the June 28th uh, Village Board meeting. At this time, I'd like to ask everybody to please stand for the pledge and then remain standing for a moment of silence for our armed forces serving throughout the world. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, first up tonight, minutes. Uh, could I have a motion to accept the minutes from our meeting held June 14th, 2018? Make that motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Jess, can you please read abstract two? Abstract two contains vouchers 2018-0095 through 2018-0220 and totals $351,425.73. Thank you. Motion to approve abstract two. Make the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Old business. Uh, the Senior Housing Zoning Amendment was sent to the Planning Board for review on April 12, 2018, and the comments have been received. Attorney Norton has incorporated comments, and the proposed local law is ready for public hearing to be scheduled. Um, I actually thought this was a good idea or a good project, and it uh, satisfied a need. I now have some concerns with the potential traffic and real concerns with the Holland Avenue pump station. However, I will move forward with scheduling the public hearing, allowing for more discussion and review, but we do have some serious issues with the pump station and capacity down there, and uh, it's significant cost. But anyway, uh, normally these things would be dealt with with the uh, planning board, but uh, we have a situation here where we're asking to, uh, for a zoning change. And I mean, if there's issues like the uh, Hollett pump station and traffic is another big concern because I think with uh, the looking to put about 80 something units in there, if not more, uh, we would have a lot of traffic coming out of both ends with Timber Ridge on the other side. So the likelihood would, you would need a traffic light there, and I'm not too keen about having a traffic light there. But anyway, these are really not, these are really planning board issues, but the only reason why I bring them up now is because uh, we're being asked to make a zoning change. So um, that's why I brought them up tonight. But anyway, I think you know we'll move forward with the public hearing, let the public have an opportunity to come in and talk. And at the same time, we will have people there from the uh, Water and Sewer Department. We'll have engineering there and things like that. So these things can be discussed in the public eye and we can get a real handle on how we should move forward or not. So with that, I'd like a motion to schedule a public hearing to be held uh, on July 26th, 2018 at 7 p.m. to entertain public comments on introductory local law number five of 2018 to change the zoning designation of specific properties located along New York State Route 32 from LC to R2A and to SH, and to amend the zoning map to reflect these changes. The properties to be changed are known on the Woodbury tax map as section 218, block two, lot seven, nine, 10, 11, and 13. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? Yeah, I won't I, be, I won't be able to make that date, I'll be, uh, in the hospital for surgery again. I'll be out for the, I'm going out on the 25th and I won't, I'll be in the hospital for at least a week and then I'll be out probably recuperating for another two weeks. We'll make sure you bring in a note. Okay. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to say, I, I'm very interested in hearing what the public has to say about this modified application. Um, so I'm curious. So I, I'm, in, I'm Looking forward to the public hearing as well. Yeah, I'm just sorry, I'm going to miss it because I'd like to hear the public. 
I mean, I can go. I can. I can go on the website and watch the uh, videos and stuff. But it's still not the same as being present and hearing hearing it. Okay. We'll Skype you in. <laughs> you just can't vote that way. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next up we have a uh, new business uh, discussion, uh, code amendment. Uh, a request was received from the planning board acting as the architectural review board to amend the village code in relation to signage applications before them. The code requires that all applications for ARB approval be subject to a public hearing. For applications related to the replacement of existing signs, the planning board believes requiring a public hearing may be unnecessary for the board to review and determine uh, determination on appropriateness. They are requesting that the code be revised to empower them to grant a waiver of the public hearing requirement if they determine further public comment is not necessary. Uh, I'm not sure this is a good idea, uh, eliminating the opportunity for the public to speak. I'd like to hear from the board and their opinion on how we should proceed. So I think we need to discuss this, make sure everybody, let's hear how everybody feels about this. But they're, they're basically asking that, you know, when somebody comes in that already has an existing sign, which they already had a public hearing to get that sign, but they want to make changes to it. And they're asking at that point, the planning board could deem at that point in time that the additional public hearing may not be necessary. Yeah. All right, what I'm curious about is what criteria, what objective criteria would the planning board use to determine that a public hearing would not be necessary? I, I didn't get much information on this. Uh, I mean, we could ask the planning board chairman happens to be in the audience if you'd like to ask her directly. I don't have a problem with that, but um, well, do, do you want to ask her directly? I, I would, but is that proper form? I think, being that it's almost July, I think we can make an exception to summertime rules. Okay. Uh, does the planning board chair wish me to repeat the question? Sure. The question was, with what criteria would the planning board use to make the decision to, to that a, a sign uh, meets the existing code, the changes would meet the existing code? What, what that's what I'm assuming you're looking for. We, the code is very specific of signage. Um, this came up because we had a signage down by um, Bigger World. The right. sign predominantly was blue and white, and they put up their sign. And by the c color of the code, they did, they did agree to change the freestanding sign. But the sign in the wall on the store, we let it stay as the green and the purple because some of the signs were a di little different. So. They followed the code. Gary had uh, the building inspector saw the saw the uh, diagram, and they were all within the code, the sizes and everything. And we said everything was similar on the building, so that's. But we had to have a public hearing because we couldn't waive it, and that's where we had the issue. And where you have a sign down by Larkin Drive, where you have Sharon Williams and the other stores. They're all different colors, where this particular signage on the on 32 had to be all blue and white. So that's where we were having why we're trying to protect the town, but the, excuse me, the village, as well as the applicants so they don't have to have undue. Yeah, I totally get the desire yeah. to to reduce the number of meetings that an applicant would have to attend. And, I, and I'm all on board with that. Uh, but if the particular example you gave had to do with color and you were determining that the new color, the revision to the color scheme of the sign, still met the existing code. So in that particular instance, the objective criteria was color. But what other circumstances might exist where that measure would need to be applied and what objective criteria could be used in circumstances other than color, for example? Does that make sense? I guess what I'm yes. trying to say is that, excuse me, before you answer, I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, un, un, sorry, under those circumstances, uh, that makes perfect sense, and it would be 
uh, uh, much more fair to the applicant and unnecessary, in my opinion, as well, to have a, another public hearing because you're changing the color. And if the new colors comply with the code, then why would you need to? As a matter of fact, that should just be a sign permit, I would think. But uh, uh, so I totally get the the concept and the objective of eliminating or reducing the number of public appearances that an applicant would have to make, as it costs them money, it costs the planning board money, uh, and it takes up the public's time when other things could be going on. So I get it, but. That would also allow the building inspector to make the decision on his own, as long as they, they followed the criteria, the size, and the dimensions, and then they would not even have to, and that would also benefit the building department as yeah. well, so they can make a decision without as he does with everything else. I Correct. mean, that's not any different than any other code that he yeah. gets asked to interpret. So what's different here then? Well, he had to send this application to the planning board because of the one difference of the, the signage on the building. And the thing of it is, that particular building, we couldn't find anything in the prior approvals for the signage. Okay, so then another question would be, are we trying to change code or, or redo an existing code because of one specific instance, or is this something that would be uh, uh, happening more and more often, in your opinion, times. as the chair? It could happen more often, because we have different um, locations where there are buildings, um, businesses. Um, let's say the building that's down by um, Amalfi's, if they wanted to change their sign and change the color code, they would have to, if they want to change out a certain business, they would have to come before the planning board and get approval. Whereas if we had this, this one little code added in there, the building department could make that decision and not send them on. It well, just moves the process a little smoother to, to move from one to another. You know. yeah. I mean, I, I see that, but I, I just want to bring out one point that I'm concerned about. The one concern I have is, for example, Amafis might be a good example because people live across the street. Uh, depending on where the business is, it'd be like the last opportunity for a resident who may have a problem with the sign or concern, the last opportunity to come in and say something. If we eliminate the public hearing, then, you know, they, they lose that unless we can find another mechanism like the, I mean, I don't have a problem taking a look at this and maybe we should find another mechanism where, like for Amafis, if they're changing their sign, we're giving him a lot of free advertising tonight. Not, not that many people watch it, but uh, or or in the audience. But uh, for example, if if it was a thing like how we send out postcards when somebody wants a zoning change, maybe we could do something similar when somebody wants a sign change that residents in the area get notified, and if they have they have an opportunity to go in and and or send a letter to the planning board. So when they change, like for example, in in the bagel world down there you couldn't find anything about signage. So technically, we don't even know if they did have an ARB on their signs down there originally, do, do we? Correct. OK. I just have, uh, is, I'm, I'm going back into the vaults, back into 2007. I think it was when we when we did the sign, uh, we redid the sign uh, codes. Yeah. And I didn't look at it recently, unfortunately. But I believe at that time, we said we tried to make signs uh, consistent throughout the village mm -hmm. and we were told we couldn't do that we were told it was it could it could it could be an infringement of somebody's first amendment's right free speech it could be uh the branding of a particular company or something so we said it would i believe it was signs had to be no more than four colors we didn't want to have right. you know we didn't want to have signs with the all these different colors and if it was a sign that was replacing another sign, as long as it was of the same dimensions, and it was being lit the same way and everything, there wouldn't be any need for anything. The building department could just issue a permit or just say, OK. So even the sign, even though the rest of the signs in that particular strip mall there are blue with the blue background with white print, I don't know if there's anything in the code that says, and we're talking about bagel world here, they have, they have four colors, maybe three colors. I don't see what the issue is there, truly. If they're staying within the number of colors, they're allowed under code. Right. And the size they're allowed under code. And the lighting is, I don't know if there's anything in the, our current codes that say signs have to be of a consistent color. 
I mean, I remember at the time the group, which and it included the uh, Frank from uh, Printing Plus, representing. You know, he makes most of the signs. Also, he's representing the chamber. He was on the committee, and we had we had others on the committee, and uh, I think that was an issue. With we could only we could, we can limit the colors, but not say to individuals they all need to be blue with white print throughout town or a colonial kind of maroon color with gold or white or something and stay consistent. All we could all we could do at that time was to say limit it to the number of colors. And if it was replacing an existing sign, it couldn't be any larger than the existing sign it was replacing. So I think we have to go back and look and see is there maybe inconsistencies in the codes or something like that? Well I think I think this is something a little different than that, and I and I know the chamber is trying to put together a proposal to come back and have some of the code sign codes changed, and that's that's a different issue. This, this is more about having a public hearing. That yeah, this is all this is about, and my only concern about this, I, and everything you said is true. I'm just saying, my only concern here is that it it's the last opportunity for somebody to come in. Who may have a problem with the sign now? You know, most of the time nobody's going to come in and say anything. That's my experience. So, but it, it, we we are eliminating that that opportunity. That's the part that concerns me. Right. So I I don't have a problem you know doing this, but I think we have to find another mechanism that would allow a resident who may have a problem or somebody or or a, or a neighbor or even another business next door might you know have a problem with the sign. You know, we can eliminate their opportunity to come in and speak, uh, but I'm not saying we necessarily have to have a public hearing. We may have another potential way of uh, accomplishing that. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I don't think we, I don't see the need to, because like on ARB, very rarely, and I, I attend a lot of the zoning and planning meetings, is will there be any comments on the ARB? It'll usually be, not no so. very really but we still have to offer the public that opportunity right. I and think, there and, may be a different way of doing and, it by and combining I it with something also agree with Tim's point that I don't think at least the way this amendment is written that it's not specific enough about what criteria uh, or base would be used for the planning board to determine right, uh, well, right. that they didn't need it and no disrespect to the current chairman but you know, she's not going to be. I don't think you're planning on being chairman forever. So, uh, but I'm the change to the it. code would be would be uh, <laughs> would with you know would be long lasting, and I, I think it uh, it does take away from the public's imp opportunity to have input on to. Yeah, I, I mean, I I understand the concept here. You know, a lot of times you schedule a public hearing, you have to put it in the paper, you got to go through all the motions, and nobody speaks. But again, I am concerned about uh, the public's opportunity to speak. Right. So, I mean, my suggestion would be to the planning board is to maybe take another look at this and, and tighten it up or come up with another solution. Uh, I mean, our concern here with this, I, I can tell from the board, is that we're eliminating the opportunity for the public to speak. So if we could find another way to... Has, has this been discussed with Rick? Yep. What was his yes. input? Well, Rick and Dennis talked about it, and Dennis submitted the, the memo to you on June yeah, 7th. I, I see the memo yeah. from, yeah. from Dennis. I just don't see anything from Rick, which is why yeah. I asked about Rick. Yeah. No, they, they both were, were asked to work on it, and Dennis was the one who submitted it. Okay. Well, why don't we table this then? Yeah, I definitely want to consider this some more. I, I, you know, I'd like to speak with Rick directly on this and see what his take is on I just don't, I don't know what, let me rephrase, I'm sorry. I don't know that we should be reinventing the wheel for because we had an issue with one application or yeah. one uh, request. Uh, I have no problem giving additional latitude uh, as long as it's used judiciously. And I think it was you, buddy, that uh, made the point that Maria might not be the chair, you know, ten years from now, uh, uh, and who would be the chair and what latitude would they have, or how would they would they apply any latitude that we 
grant now and, and what protections are offered to both the village and to the applicants. Yeah, and if we were to make, I think I'd just like to see a little bit more specificity. Yeah, specificity. We absolutely need what, that. Uh, you're, you're right. What Mar circumstances? Maria, would this be a vote of the whole board or would this be a uh, chairman decision? I mean, what's the intention? It's the whole board. I have okay. no sole decision. It's yeah. a five-member board. No, I'm board. just asking. I mean, you know. Yeah. And, I, and that was my understanding as well. I'm just, I want to... I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. I just want to hear from Rick that this is what we should be doing. That's all. So. Well, here, here's my suggestion. I mean, if the, the chamber, and I don't mean to uh, insult the chamber, but if they ever get their act together and make their proposal about sign law, uh, I think maybe we should take a look at that and then consider this too at the same time. But I would like the planning board to maybe think of uh, a different option or a solution and maybe, you know, with the planning board attorney, uh, make a, you know, well, another proposal yeah. to us. Well, this was a proposal for the hearing, not to do with the sign law. No, I understand right, right, that, right. Right. but yeah. but uh, they're kind of tied together a little bit, depending on how, which direction we go with the new sign law. You know, I'm I'm just saying that because of the new sign law, we may want to, you know, depending how flexible the new sign law is, we may want to keep the public hearing in place. Depending on how not flexible the new sign law is, we may be willing to eliminate the public hearing. All right? Yes, sir. You know, one of the last things Dennis says in his memo is that, is that it is recommended that the code defer to the planning board's judgment whether a public hearing for such ARB applications is required. Relevant section of code with sample language appended. So, I mean, yeah, he's saying that it, that's his recommendation after explaining what it is that you guys want to do. Um, but I want to hear from the legal side of it. I'd really like to hear Rick's opinion on this. So I, I you know, I, I don't want to dismiss it outright. I'd like to hear from Rick at uh, the table well, and, and hear from Rick. I'm not dismissing no, it. I know. I'm just I saying I'm, I, I think we need a little more information. I agree. And, uh, you know. Well, I'm probably going to let it just go into the sunset because I'm not going to spend any more money on it out of my budget. Okay. <laughs> That's. That's fine with me. Okay, uh, so we'll table this, and if we get another proposal, we're, we'll deal with it. And hopefully the Chamber of Commerce will be around to make us a proposal on what they think the new sign laws should be. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, I think some of our sign laws are pretty antiquated, and uh, if you look at that sign down there in front of uh, Reynolds Oil, you know, they list all the businesses. Nobody can read that, so, I mean, what's the point, you know? Especially if you're driving. I mean, if you're walking, maybe you can read it. Well, but remember, the, the, our, the la our last law was written 10, 11 years ago. No, I know. I'm so saying it's that. Time, it's probably time to revisit it at some point, too. No argument. And if the chamber can get together and come to, come to us, we can, like we did last time, form another committee that then, you know, uh, looks at it and come back to the uh, board and, uh, and see and take a vote on it. Very good. All right, that concludes our business for this evening. So I'm going to go out to the public. Anybody in the first row? Anybody in the second row? Nobody? Anybody in the third row? Anybody at all? Maria? Um, buddy? Uh, nothing. Just uh, wish everybody a happy uh, Independence Day holiday uh, next week. And a uh, happy sum. Neil? Well, since uh, Desiree isn't here, I will I will put a little something in. Uh, the fireworks. The fi oh. the fi the, no, not about the Packers. Uh, fireworks will be at the middle school uh, next Saturday, uh, July 7th. Also, earlier before the fireworks, there's going to be a uh, touch and whatever. Touch a truck. Touch a truck, which is uh, being done by the highway department and stuff in the parking lot up at the middle school. All right, in the middle school, a lot of people are finding that the first year they did the fireworks up there. Uh, we were one of the few people up there. Easiest place, it's a beautiful place. You're sitting up above the fireworks and it comes right <laughs> up into your face. that. Comes right, up, <laughs> comes right up into your face and we were able to drive out. The now, best place is now, on the, f on the field. Every, everybody has found out about it, and, it, and it's really hard to get in and out, but uh, it is a great place to, uh, yeah. see, the, to see really the fireworks is, yeah. from. Yeah, it's one of the best shows around. Yeah. yeah. You done? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, you know, with that said, uh, the next few days are going to bring extremely high heat and humidity. Uh, so if you have elderly uh, parents or friends or, or pets, keep an eye out. Everybody stay hydrated. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Jess, you have anything? Neil stole my thunder. You stole your thunder. Because uh, oh. Jess is actually Desiree tonight, so just so oh, you know. Oh, right. you had planned on that? Okay, I, I take everything back. Go ahead, Jess. <laughs> Uh, I just want to wish everybody a ha happy 4th of July and to uh, piggyback on what uh, Tim said, that uh, please stay hydrated, be careful walking around on the streets, and uh, I wish everybody a safe and happy summer. Anyway, we will see you before the summer's over, So, but I just wanted to get that out there. Anyway, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you and good night.